dancers. Welcome to Miami. Whatever comes to my mind at that moment. Uh, it was the FBA conference, right? And that's when they first pitched the whole EQ order. I'm like, but you know what the heck is this? What is EQ? Who cares about this stuff? But I watched adults fail. Like I watched adults cry. <laughs> I watched adults not be able to. And it wasn't like he was going in there with like a blueprint and hey, this is the question and this is how we have to. He was just saying like, hey, can you stand in a group and ask me how can I support you? Like simple exercises to get an adult, grown men and women to tap into legit emotions so they can be able to connect at a much larger scale. You run a school, you're the president, and everyone at the conference were important, Broward and Florida educational personnel. Right. And they can't harness anger. So that means, in my opinion, they can't deal with any kid who has anger issues because they don't understand their own anger and how to deal with it. So they just disregard it completely. So it's like, dang, imagine if they did possess that control of all those emotions, then they'll be able to connect to a larger population. So all the high energy kids that we deal with, we just got a hold of them. And as a business point of view, you can still whether profit from, you know what I'm saying? There's just so many different angles why EQ is much more important. That's why the companies that stand out, they have them. They have like the employees who dedicate their time to like connecting and going around the world, traveling and finding new stuff. They have the employees who are sent into pitch programs and like the worst of the worst facilities and stuff for that reason. So yeah, you'd be surprised how much adults just, it's all a business for them. Business aspect. This is what I went to school for. Money, money, money. Education. I'm supposed to get this amount because I went to school for this amount and I did it. And half the time, the ones who profit 10 times more are the ones who actually, like the funniest thing he, him and Mr. Williams say, they're not at work. They're doing what they love. Doing what they love. They're yeah. So you don't realize how many hours you committed to it. More people like that, to me, gives it a bigger the end result. It makes it much sweeter, the fruits of your labor, mm -hmm. than uh, the nine to five aspect of everything. Just going to get a paycheck. Yeah. You don't get because at the end of the day, if that's the type of people that you're dealing with, when somebody gives them a higher paycheck, they're gone. Right. Where's the real, you know what I'm saying? Oh, there's another youth program offering me this amount instead. Let me just go. Not all youth programs offer the same genuine touch that this one offers, you know what I'm saying? Not all youth programs give that kind of stuff. Not all youth programs care about a follow-up. I met him when I was 17. I'm 21 now with a kid and everything, you know what I'm saying? You're not finding that in any of these programs. I don't even know. My student counselor from Boys and Girls Club that I went to every summer. I forgot his name. Seen him at Walmart the other day. I felt so bad. I'm like, dang. <laughs> but I dealt with you every day. And I right. remember having these dead-end conversations about life and goals and aspirations that, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you tell me, oh, you need to get a job. You're a young man. I don't know how to get a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's a great conversation to have. And that's what a lot of people think it's about. Oh, let's go in and change these kids' mind. Let's talk to them about positivity because no one else is. Yes, my mom's drilling it in my head every single day. And my mom's speaking to me every day. My homeboy, like, we have the people telling us, talking and talk, but only my mom's calling me, making sure I went on that interview. But if I had my mom, Pewter, Mr. Mike, you, five, six other people calling me to say, hey, did you get up? Did you, are you there? You know what I'm saying? Well, did you try this? All right, well, wait right here. I'm going to cook. That makes the journey to where you're going way more easy, way easier, way more smooth. And that's legit what it's about, like just smoothing it out things because it gets rough. Sometimes things get rough and it's not even your fault, it's just the cards you was dealt with. You're in a situation, like last year I was in situations, I was like, dang, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, like, why am I in it? I didn't do nothing. What did I, I've been chilling, nigga, like, man, I've been at home. Watching TV, probably even too lazy, but you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you just beating stuff that you need to help getting out of. And before you know it, you could lose life. Getting suspended one time can lead to you dropping out. You got suspended because you had a bad day. That suspension, now you have a bad week because you're at home. That bad week, now you're about to come back to school. You missed the whole week of school, whatever went on at home. So now you're a whole week behind. 
Now you're slacking off in school, which could lead to another suspension. Two, three, four suspensions in the school, and you're expelled. Now you can't go to no school. Just because you had one bad day. Right. One bad day. That's all it took. One, and the, the reverberation of that one bad day just destroyed your life. Now you're a dropout. So now when you're trying to, at 21, when you're trying to get a job where you're supposed to be working and doing something, dedicating to a career, you're trying to get a high school diploma. It's like, there's so much different scenarios I can sit down here and tell you about. That how things could just go sour and it's not your fault. And people say, we'll figure it out. But it's like, dang, I'm not, I have to deal with problems. That's not my fault alone. And that sucks.